In this lecture, we'll learn how to plan and start an IC Horse Trends survey program. First, download the IC Horse materials and data sheets from this course homepage or the IC Horse Trends website. To register yourself or your survey team, send an email with your particulars such as your name, contact information, and affiliation to ichorse at projectseahorse.org. Eventually, you'll be able to register online. So check back on the IC Horse Trends website for updates. Please refer to the ethical guidelines for interacting with seahorses in the IC Horse Trends manual. Essentially, you want to minimize any harm to seahorses and their environment during your activities. Before you start, get to know the seahorses in your area. Refer to the relevant Regional Seahorse Identification Guide and practice your identification skills while diving. Even if you don't conduct a full Icy Horse Trends survey during your practice dives, do upload any seahorse sightings to the Icy Horse website. To start a new survey site, you want to first check if someone is already surveying the area. You can do this by emailing iSeahorse at projectseahorse.org. Now it's time to find some seahorses. One of the best ways to find these rare fishes is to tap into local knowledge. Talk to the people who spend lots of time out at sea, such as local fishers, divers, researchers, and conservationists. You can also post inquiries on social media, such as Facebook and Twitter. Some of the questions you can ask are, have you seen seahorses? When was the last time you saw them? Were there many or few seahorses? How deep were the seahorses? And what kind of environment were the seahorses found in? Other ways to find seahorses include looking on the internet. Use search engines, look through seahorse photos, blog posts, and articles, and don't forget to look on iSeahorse sightings. Local fishing activities can offer clues as well. Look through catches of fishing landing locations to see if seahorses were caught in the general area. If so, ask where they were caught. You can also check out a fish landings toolkit that is available on the iSeahorse website. Finally, look in habitats where seahorses may occur, such as coral reefs, seagrass and seaweed beds, and mangrove forests. In many areas, seahorses can be found on oyster reefs and rocky, sandy, and muddy bottoms too. Because seahorses like to hold on to structures, it's worth examining the base of piers, artificial reefs, and discarded nets whenever you see them. Found a good seahorse survey site? Now it's time to fill in the underwater site data sheet with the site description. This includes the country, site name, and GPS coordinates if you have them. Also, try to include other location information, such as whether the site is located within a marine protected area, is impacted by human activities such as fishing, the location of the nearest human population center, and who the most frequent area users are. You can find the underwater site data sheet in the IC Horse Trends manual or as a separate PDF file in the course materials. If someone is already conducting seahorse surveys in your area, you can just join an existing survey effort instead of starting a new site. Repeated surveys of the same site over time, also known as monitoring, gives us the best data for tracking population trends, so we encourage you to return to the same sites on a regular basis. For repeated surveys, do review the underwater site data sheet each time before you survey. If there are any changes, fill in a new data sheet and submit that with your survey data. Ready to survey? Here is a list of recommended survey items. A clipboard or dive slate with an attached pencil. A ruler or scale for measuring seahorses. Survey data sheets that can be printed on waterproof paper or copied on the slate. Laminated seahorse identification guide and seahorse survey handout. And a stopwatch. The next items are optional, but useful for the survey. An underwater or waterproof camera, 
a compass, and a handheld GPS unit. If you don't have a GPS unit, many smartphones and GPS-enabled cameras can capture GPS coordinates as well. Finally, it's always good to remember that safety comes first. Sometimes you might not be able to finish your survey. This could be due to bad weather, a sudden drop in visibility, or the tide coming back in. You could also feel ill or fatigued and unable to continue. For scuba divers, you might approach no decompression dive limits. At times like this, stop the survey immediately and head back. You can always return at another time to complete your survey. Just make a note on your survey data sheet about the distance covered and time spent on the survey.